Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic uh, Jewels Origins. So we are here for a final episode of the Simic Tempo deck. So obviously Mulligan that first hand, this isn't too bad a hand, we've got four mana, got an Outland Colossus and a Welkin turn, so there we go, we've got three drop as well, so we're looking, we're curving out fairly well at the moment, so not too unhappy just want to draw into one mana within the next four turns just so we can play the outland colossus on turn five and we're playing a blue black deck so interesting and he's played a harbinger of the tides without bouncing one of my creatures interesting okay not sure i fully understand that but there we go there's a fifth mana we need so if uh if the game stop uh, giving me mana now that would be fantastic i swear to god the mana uh, kind of like um, the RNG for mana in this game is completely balked. Like I don't get it. It's just really messed up. The fact that it's really easy to get mana flooded or mana screwed in this game. I swear to God, the last two iterations of duels, while they had mana screw and mana flood, it's an interesting target to use a reef soul on. Um, yeah, while they had mana screw and mana flood, I swear to God, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as this game used to be. So it looks like we're playing um, uh, not drag not. Drown Catacomb Control, um, whatever blue black is. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Interesting, my brain's gone totally fuzzy. Okay, so I think we shall play the Rogue's Passage here. Save the Bounding Krasis and drop it in on, on his turn. And tap his uh, Harbinger of the Tides. Depends what else he plays as well. So we shall actually then drop in the Bounding Krasis and use it to tap down the Harbouring of the Tide so that he can't swing this turn. We would like to tap you please, thank you very much. There we go. So he won't be swinging this turn and we now have a blocker for his two creatures so we're looking pretty good there. He's already used a Reeve Soul on a Welking turn, you know, more for you. Ooh, we've even managed to find the Capture Kite Fins. Very nice. Another one of our uh, kind of really cool end conditions. The only thing I really want now would be a Will Breaker because this synergizes up so well with Will Breaker. But uh, I think we're just going to skip attack for now. Save my Krasis as a blocker. I'd rather be able to block the Jesse and Thief from giving him any card draw. Wouldn't mind one of my own Jesse and Thieves next turn, but uh, so he's telling time. So the Jesse and Thief will go up to a 2 4. So we won't kill it now, but I can at least prevent it uh, from him drawing a card from it. So it makes me slightly happier. And then we'll be able to drop the Outline Colossus uh, next turn. Yeah, next turn. And then we'll be able to start tapping down creatures uh, whenever we drop another creature with the Capture Kite Fins. So I'd very much like to draw into a Will Breaker sometime soon. Okay, so is he going to swing? Or I could just kill his harbouring of the tide. Depends what he swings with. No, he decided not to swing this turn, interestingly enough. So what is he waiting for? Okay, so he's done nothing. Okay, interesting. Okay, so we shall play another forest, because we obviously need to for the uh, Outland Colossus. I'm actually going to swing this turn, see if he blocks. No, actually, well, I'll skip attack again. And we'll play the Outland Colossus this turn. There we go. Marvellous. So, um, next turn it's going to be Capture Kite Fins to ta start tapping down creatures. Frost Link to turn afterwards will allow us to tap down two creatures and potentially swing in for a huge amount of damage. So, I'm hoping that he doesn't have to talent the Telepath. So, I do have uh, instants or sorceries in this deck. So, but he did just put seven cards in. Oh, fantastic. He didn't... Oh, no. There's Will Breaker. Oh, you... Su you... That was, like, literally, like, right... The next card I was going to draw was Will Breaker. That is just evil. Pure, pure evil. And funnily enough, I didn't actually have any instants or sorceries on my top seven cards, but I'm not happy with that. Will Breaker is right there. That's the only one I have left in the deck as I've reduced it down to one, so... Uh, let's drop the Simic Guild Gate. We'll also drop the Capture Kite... Oh, what am I doing? Drop it. Oh, never mind. Uh, what we'll do instead is actually make my Outline Colossus unblockable then. Oh, I'm well pissed off about that. The fact that he um, put my Will Breaker into the graveyard is literally the next card I was about to draw as well. Not impressed in the slightest. So this is going to Renown, which is pretty cool. And then next turn, we, should, we can actually uh, tap one of these with the Capture Kite Vins. Now I do have enough mana down. Or potentially even just uh, swinging for lethal. 
with... No, I can't quite swing it. So he's going to bounce my Outland Colossus. Okay, that's fine by me. And he's going to re-soul my Krasis. You do that. See if I care. You draw a card with your silly Jesse and Thief. I'd rather you reef soul my Krasis than my Capture Kite Fins. Ugh, I'm still really salty about the Will Breaker being the next card I was going to draw as well. Okay, let's play the Island. I think we'll drop the Capture Kite Fins. Um, or do we play replay the Colossus? No, I think we'll replay the Colossus this turn. Use it as a blocker. Yeah, I'm still really salty. Really, really salty about Willbreaker. I won that card. It's my one of my favourite card it's my favourite card in this deck. It's the one that wins it's the one that wins games. So he's played his two bring two Harbringer of the Tides. I don't know what other kind of uh, bounce he's got though. So we're gonna watch out for our little Little big outline colossus even, sorry. Let me zoom out here. So this guy's taking his time for his telling time. He's played a land, a tap land, which is good for us. So he's played nothing here. Okay. It's nice. Uh, let's play the Hinterland Harbour. I think this turn I play Capture Kite Fins. Just so we can tap down, I don't know. You, one of you, maybe? Uh, yeah, we'll tap down one of you. And then we'll swing with the Outland Colossi, see if he blocks. Does he block? I'm assuming he probably will. Yeah, he is going to block with the har other Harbinger, Harbinger of the Tides. Has he got anything else that he can do here with the uh, two mana he's got open? I don't think so, unless he had a Disperse, which apparently he did not, so uh, that's good for us. We do have the Wild Size to push through damage at some point. We couldn't do it this turn, obviously, because the Capture Kite Fins is too expensive. Okay, so he plays Fleshbag Marauder, so we have to choose to sacrifice a creature now. Now, I think Kite Fins is probably the less important of the two here, as the Colossus will win us this. So he's going to swing with the 1-3, okay. I take one point of damage, he draws a card. Now I could Frost Lynx that this turn, which I'm probably going to do. Tap this one down. Swing with the Outland Colossi. push through some damage so we get him down to what we're we gonna get him down to eight this becomes renowned again which is good for us so we've potentially got lethal on the board depending on what he's got in his hand can he bounce it I don't know at least we managed to play a second creature there so at least if he's got another flesh bag marauder in hand we should be okay Who are we playing Alder Bangaranga what a name what rank am I at the moment 19 okay that's fine, I'm working my way back up to in the, into the 20s as I was testing out a, uh, a new deck, so I lost a couple of ranks while playtesting it. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get there eventually. It's basically the uh, deck for this week's Friday Night Magic, so my new deck for the week. So it will be... Uh, I think I'm going to go for a Boris Auras deck this week, and then potentially next week we'll be looking at uh, Battle for Zendikar cards as... Um, they should be out in the next few days in theory so I don't know I might do a Friday Night Magic episode with a new deck and then potentially change it around depending on what is he doing claustrophobia okay so that's gonna get claustropho claustrophobia claustrophobia bleh, I can't even say it it's basically been tapped so I need some way of either untapping it or removing the claustrophobia so he is going to swing with you so I'll block you and then wild size. So we're going to draw into a card here. Which oh, is an island. Of course it's an island. Why wouldn't it be an island? Okay, so we've got our own Jesse and Thief, which is good for us. So I'm just going to swing with the 2 2 on its own. Deal two points of damage, getting down to six. Play our Jesse and Thief. 
which should be nice for in future. So we got... do we have lethal on the board? We do, actually, in theory, depending on what he plays. I don't... unless I can tap this down somehow, I don't think I can push it through. But uh, we can get pretty close in the next couple of turns, so Grave Blade Marauder. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creatures you control in your graveyard. Okay, fair enough. Kind of terrifying, but uh, I think we should push through enough damage before that becomes too important. Hang on a bit, if I make that unblockable, if I get another spell next turn, I've got lethal. Because, or another creature, anything, any kind of, any spell or creature, anything but mana, and I think I win next turn. Because basically I can make this unblockable, Might of the Masses gives it prowess, and any other spell, miscellaneous spell or creature, basically gives it that extra plus one that I actually need to push through lethal. Aha, Anchor to the Ether, perfect. So, what we do is, we start off with an Anchor to the Ether, on the 1-4. That goes to a 2-4. Oh, what are you doing?! Oh, I hate the. Why does it always tap down Rogue's Passage first? Why? Ugh. Fine, I attack with all. Disperse. Of course he plays the disperse. And is he going to block? He is going to block. Okay, that's fine. Ugh. Why does it always tap down? But he rogues passage first. That would have been lethal there. My god. Although he had to disperse anyway, so it didn't really matter too much. Okay, so we're going to replay the Jesse and Thief. Ugh, I hate the way it does that, but basically it wouldn't have mattered regardless because he had the disperse. So I don't feel too salty about the game screwing me over with the rogues passage. I really should check that every time. I always forget that it taps down rogues passage before anything else. So he's playing necromantic summons, but target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Oh no, not my will breaker. Not my will breaker. No. If he goes for will breaker, I am, you know, in a, he's gone for my will breaker, hasn't he? No, he's gone for capture kite fins. Interesting. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting Willbreaker. Uh, okay, so we'll play the Elvis Visionary. Oh, what are you doing? Get. Oh, I just. I hate my life. We do have the Whirler Rogue, though, so we've got another way of pushing through lethal here. I think this is lethal now because I can make my creature unblockable. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, thank God I drew Whirler Rogue there. Right. Make you unblockable and then tap down two artifacts. We then pump it up with Might of the Masses and then swing for lethal. God's sake. Game, why would you tap down Rogue's Passage first? That's like the last card that I want to tap down. I got bailed out by a lucky top deck there, really. Thank you, Whirler Rogue. That's why you're in the deck. Whew. I'll see you in a sec for a second game, guys. Okay, guys. Here we are for the second game of the day. And probably going to be the final one. Just so I don't make the video too long. Now, this is a pretty good hand to start off with. So I'm keeping this hand. Got the green source that I need for, say, for example, the wild size. I've also got a Whirler Rogue and a Frost Link. So, pretty sweet. I'm not going to complain here. Ooh, excellent. We've even got another wild size. So we'll start off with the Guild Gate for obvious reasons. Um, what I'm looking for. I'm with, uh, in terms of people's portraits, I've played two homeless Jaces in the Wasteland twice in a row now. I'm with Hakeem, another YouTuber on this one. People really make, need to make a put, need to make more of an effort, uh, when it comes to, uh, deck boxes. Like, I tend to go for, like, an avatar and a background, which kind of matches the overall theme of the deck. Say, for example, I've got a kind of, uh, a, a simicky looking, uh, avatar with a kind of a green background. So it's like green and blue, basically. I like the kind of the synergy. So if it's like mono red, I try and go for kind of a ready theme, stuff like that. So I, I like to kind of customize my deck boxes in that way. Excellent. We've even got another green source there. So I'll play the forest. We'll also swing with the Undercity Troll, which we do have uh, the Regenerate open for, which is good. In case he decides to like kill it, which he does not. Okay, so we'll just leave the Wild Size open, I think, for now. In case he has a Reeve Soul, although we're possibly looking at Elves at this point. So we've got green, green, black, so I'm going to assume Elves, although he's got nothing to play so far. He's mana screwed. Oh, wow. This is going to be a nice, easy victory then. 
He probably did the usual thing and had two mana in hand, was hoping to draw into a mana within the first turn or two. Didn't get anything. So what we got here then, so he has got Wild Instincts. Interesting. So we're just going to carry on playing the way we play. There we go. So we're just going to swing in with the Undercity Troll. We'll play the Whirler Rogue at the end of this turn. Just so we can make, uh, say for example, an Undercity Troll unblockable next turn in case he plays anything. Thanks to the Whirler Rogue's uh, super awesome tempo ability. Using the Thopters that it spawns to uh, make a creature unblockable. Or potentially just swinging in for huge amounts of damage. Okay, so we're to find yourself a third land. Foundry of the Consoles. Why is this looking like a deck, uh, deck wizard deck? He's ranked 16, so I wouldn't have thought it would just be a plain old deck wizard one. Okay, so he's played a Graveblade Marauder, which we're not too fussed about. Probably just going to Frost Lynx it this turn. So, yeah, we'll just tap it down. Probably anchor it to the Ether next turn just to really troll him. So I don't think he can... Yeah, he has to actually deal damage to me to uh, activate its ability, although he wouldn't really do any... Um, wouldn't do any damage to my face, even if he did. Um... Sorry, he wouldn't do any additional damage with his special ability at the moment because he needs creatures in his graveyard, which he doesn't have. And he's, we've gone down to eight already, so I think we've basically got lethal on the board next turn. Yeah, we do. So three, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we got lethal because we're just going to anchor to the ether that thing and then swing in for lethal. She's kind of hilarious that we've won this easily, but uh, I almost feel bad for him. But at the same time, I don't because it just means that I get a nice easy win to finish off the uh, the episode. <clears throat> As the first one was kind of a uh, battle of wits, this is just me kind of stomping all over him as we had like the perfect, perfect cast to deal huge amounts of damage early on and then just laugh, laugh at his face with uh, wild size and anchors, anchors to the ether and stuff like that. Okay, so he's played Anissa, so we just anchor to the ether that and swing, swing for lethal, so yeah, that was nice and straightforward. Unless he plays another creature, in which case I still think we've got lethal, so as we have the wild size down. See what he does. Absolutely nothing. Perfect. So I don't know what you can do with one black mana unless he's got, say, for example... I mean, we could even just disperse that, but I'm going to be even more trollish and just anchor it to the ether as well. We get to scry as well. You never know. Uh, you can go on the bottom. And he's been replaced by the AI. Of course he has, because we've just won. So we'll just swing with all. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just had to cough. And that is game. Awesome. Couple of nice, uh, couple of nice games to finish off with this deck. So it's 220 gold. So uh, rank 21, almost. Uh, so because I managed to drop Outland Colossus twice and renowned it twice, I got like loads towards this uh, quest, which is pretty sweet. But let's open up a booster as well. See what we get. Anything good? Rocks Maulers, uh, Displacement Wave, Girapa Ether Grid. I like that card for a uh, for my uh, what's it called Thopter deck. Blightcaster, just another for a black white enchantment deck. I think yeah, uh, yeah, not that's pretty average pack. So uh, yeah, that is the end of the episode for now. A couple of quick games. First, second game is a bit of a uh, bit of a farce, but hey ho. First game was a bit more fun. But uh, yeah, new deck on Friday. So as always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.